Hi, my name is Matt. I'm Andrew. And I'm Josh. And we are doing our thermodynamics project on a simple little steam engine. One of the first steam engines developed back in the 1700s was by James Watt called the Watt steam engine and it was one of the first to make use of a separate condenser. This idea condensed steam without cooling the piston and cylinder walls as did the internal spray of the Newcomen's engine. This uh, doubled, more than doubled, the efficiency of the engine. The condensation occurred without significant heat loss from the cylinder. One popular application of steam engines was on a steam locomotive. The first one was made by Richard Trevithick and it was first operated in 1804. The first practical one was made in 1812 by John Bleckensop and the first one to carry passengers it was called the Locomotion Number no. 1 and it was made by um, the Robert Stevenson and Company and uh, first operated in 1825 and it ran on the Darlington Railway. The majority of steam locomotives were retired from service by the 1980s, but many still continue to run on tourist and heritage lines. Another popular application of steam engines was on steam boats and they were very popular from the early to mid 1900s, but since the 1980s they have been replaced by gas turbines and diesel engines for the most part, but uh, they are still used on nuclear powered ships and nuclear powered submarines and the Navy still operates them on the aircraft carriers and their submarines because they are nuclear powered. Uh, in more recent items, a nuclear reactor is also uses coolant usually water, to circulate past the reactor core to absorb the heat that it generates. The nuclear reactor converts the energy released by nuclear fission into thermal energy for further conversion to mechanical or electrical parts, for, forms. This thermal energy from the fission process can be used to boil water, which creates the steam used to power the turbine, which turns an alternator to generate electricity. The coolant uh, carries the heat away which is then used to generate the steam. So how does our project generally work? Well, our project rests on top of some cork, and the cork rests on top of the water. Now, at the bottom of the cork, which is below the water, the copper pipe is turned in a way so that when steam is expelled outward, it causes our project to turn. Now, the candle, which rests on top of the cork and below the copper piping, heats up the water, which rests right below here at the copper piping. Eventually, when the water heats up enough to turn into steam, it can be expelled outward below the project and it begins to spin. All right, our materials here are some co bendable copper tubing, cork board, candle, a multi-tool, and something round to bend the copper wire around. Um, we'll start by doing that, bending the copper wire into a coil. Now that we have that, we'll find a spot in the cork board to poke a hole through.
make sure the candle will fit underneath. After we do that, we're gonna bend these tubes in the opposite directions so that once the water boils, it'll push out the steam and cause the boat to spin. So we'll do that with hands here. There is our boat. All right, looking at the energy and entropy balances of our project. We'll start out with the full energy balance and eliminate terms as needed. So we have Heat in plus work in plus the energy associated with mass in minus quantity heat out. It's the workout plus the energy associated with mass out. And that is all equal to the change in internal energy of the system. So in here, Q in represents the heat supplied to the system via the candle. There is no work in. There will be heat out, uh, which is heat lost to the surroundings and also heating up the copper tube itself. Uh, work out, which will be the rotation of the cork board on top of the water. And the change in internal energy is the initial and final states of both the copper tubing and the water slash steam inside. All right, so simplifying, we have heat in. Oh, also, there is no energy associated with mass in, so that whole term will drop out as well. So we have heat in minus the whole quantity of heat out plus work out plus mass times the enthalpy of at state two, which is a plus the velocity squared at state two, which is equal to mass times the internal energy per unit mass at state two and state one. All right. Moving on to the entropy balance, and the full entropy balance starting with entropy in minus entropy out plus entropy generated equals the change in entropy of the system. Uh, expanding each term, we have mass in times this entropy in plus heat in over a boundary temperature in minus mass out times the entropy out plus heat out, or heat loss, over another boundary temperature out, plus S gen, equals the mass of the system, times S2 minus S1. Since there is no mass entering the system, that term will drop up. Now, rearranging in order to solve for S gen, we get S gen equals mass times S2 minus S1 plus mass out times the entropy out plus the heat out 
over the boundary temperature out, minus heat in, over the boundary temperature in. And that is how we would get our entropy generated in the, our project.